Hello YouTube, thought I'd do a quick video here. I'm trying to get the blue box, I call it the blue box, um, hooked up to a Balfang GMRS radio. I got the audio part of the box to work. Um, what I did was is I had, uh, I took one of these jacks, S video, so I don't have to cut the cable that came with the with the um, blue box. I mounted this empty pill container. Yeah, I know it should be a metal box, but I'm just using what I got around here. Um, the thing that the blue box needs is a squelch line, and I found a way. Well, hopefully, <laughs> I'm gonna. There's a, a pin here. I can tap a wire off it. And maybe I was going to try to run the wire out the LED. I removed the LED um, out of here. So I thought maybe I could run the wire out this hole for my squelch. But I can't do that. The way this radio is designed, there's no absolutely no room to run wire. There, there, if I put the wire, I can't, I can't put the case back together. Um, it just, there's no way. So what I'm going to do... Remember in that one video, I we were using these jacks, that cable we cut in half, and it's got three wires on each cable. Well, the good news is I have an extra wire that I'm not using. So if I could tap this off and hook it to the jack, to the jet, one of these jacks that this wire is... is um, goes to, which if I remember right, this white wire goes to the middle terminal of the 3.5 um, jack, if I remember correctly. It goes to this terminal here. So if I could rewire the jack, find out with an ohmmeter, I'll put my meter on this lead, or I'll, I'll plug this in, and then I'll put my meter on this lead and start testing these points and see which one it is. Um, and once I find that, I will figure out which one I could solder a jumper wire to here to the. And I think um, I, I've been. I, I've got to verify this, so I don't want to say this is it 100 percent. But I think it's going to be this one right here. I got to verify it. But so if I solder a jumper wire from here to here, then I can just plug this cable in and the and the jack and then the center con center point of this cable will be my squelch line and then I can take the squelch line from here and then hook it up to the pin I need to hook it to on the other side which is this connector here mounted obviously like that so but the bad news is it's not really bad news Whatever solder point it is, I'm going to have to disconnect it, whether i got to remove a capacitor or a resistor. That may disable programming this radio via computer. You can still program it from the keypad, but you, may, you will not be able to program it with using the computer. Not a big deal, because I can program it with the keypad. Once it's programmed for my frequency that I want, for the repeater use, I don't, I'll never touch it again, so I, I don't care if I can't program it using the computer. So be keep that in mind. So I'm, I think it's this one here, and if it is, I'm gonna, I gotta recheck it. There's a capacitor I gotta remove right here, and I have a schematic of this, and I'll find out what the capacitor value is in that schematic. And then I, I can always solder one back if I needed to put the radio back into programming via computer mode or whatever. But I'll, I'll, I'll post the whatever links down below. Um, but I want to shoot this part of the video quick before I put this thing back together. I don't want to take it apart again. So we'll let you know. So we'll be uh, right back. Okay, I just did. I verified it here. Let me grab uh, what I do with my pen. Here it is. So I hooked, like you saw, I hooked a meter to this wire. I got the jack plugged in. I got the meter on continuity so it beeps and it looks like 
that, I don't know if you can hear that, that is a terminal. So I can hook my squelch line to here, which then will be on, which will come to this plug, which will in turn be fed out here. So um, that should work. The I do see, uh, when I was talking to you earlier, there's actually two components. I want to isolate this pin. I don't want nothing hooked to this. So I got to unsolder this, which is I think is a capacitor, and I think this is a capacitor up here too. There's two spots I got to dis disable. I got to remove these parts right here and right here. So this pin is isolated so I can solder a jumper wire from here to here so I can feed my squelch out of this cord to there. So um, I do have a schematic on this, so I'll, I'll post that in the link so that you can kind of see what those parts are. So if you want to put them back in there later, you'll be able to, to do that. I don't care about programming through the computer because this is going to be a, a repeater once I set the frequency through the keypad. Um, I, I won't be touching it. So let's see how this goes. I'm going to put you on pause and then we'll uh, go from there. Okay, guys, good news. We got the wire on there. As you can see, I removed, to isolate this connector, I removed the service mount components, one here and one here. Like I said, I'll post the schematic. And if I didn't mention this, this is the, what is this, UV5R. Yeah, I could probably unsolder my speaker wires, but I don't want to do that because this is going to be my test radio since I'm putting the squelch line through this plug. Um, so I want the wires hooked up for the speaker, so if other experiments down the road, I have sound. So we took pin 2 and went to this terminal, which feeds it out of this plug, and I got my meter hooked up. Also, I used it, it, it you know, <laughs> I also used this to hold the wire in place. I recommend a magnifying lens. Um, this one is kind of nice because it uses regular AAA batteries, not a watch battery bullshit. Um, so I use that. And then on your side iron, you may have to file your tip. So get yourself a metal file to file your soldering tip to a nice point to get in here. But let's see if I did this right. Now, Let's move this. Now I got my wire hooked up, my meter hooked up, I should say. Uh, I have a ground wire, which you can't see. It's a black wire here. I have it soldered to this. So we're hooked up. Volts. Um, now when I, key the, when I key up this radio, and this is in receive, I should get power coming out of this plug, the squelch line. So when it's a green light, I suppose you could tap it off the green light too, I suppose. That would be a way to detect if you're in receive mode. Well, at any rate, it, it don't matter. At any rate, let's just get back to this. But at any rate, so when I key this up, the green light will come on, and I should get power coming out of here. So let's see if, if I have the connections right before I put this radio back together. Green light. And we get voltage. A little high, I'm going to have to add a resistor. That's I don't want to use 8 volts for my logic. So we'll put a resistor at the end of this wire. We'll put a resistor. We'll calculate what the voltage drop I'll need, what resistor value. So I get this down to 5 volts. I don't like the 7.7. .7. So that's But that's fixable. I'm not worried about that. Green light, I'm transmitting it up. Green light. So good news. I got my squelch line, and I, and, that, and I got that by, like I said before, I this plug has an extra wire not being used. So we just undid the phone, what terminal it was, undid it, uh, removed those two components, so it isolates that terminal, jump with a little wire. And the wire I'm using, if you want to know, it's really small gauge. It's called wire wrap, um, and it is... Uh, does it say on here what gauge? Uh, it does not say. Oh, there it is. 24 to 30 gauge. This is what they used to use in, back in their day at Radio Shack. You had those circuit boards 
where you could uh, use that special tool and you can put your wire on a terminal and turn it. That's what this wire, that's why they call it wire wrap. I got that from, I bought this off of eBay actually. I didn't even get it off, I didn't get it off Radio Shack. I got a whole bunch of it because I'll know I'll be using a whole bunch of it. But that's what I'm using. So it looks like we're on the right path. So now I got my squelch line out by using this jack on here. So that's good news. Um, it's a little high, but that's not that, that's all right. We can put a resistor in there. I just don't like it for logic. It's it should be it should be um, I don't got this plug in all the way. It should be um, five volts or less. Well, for logic high, you want about five volts. 3.5 to 5 volts is a logic high. That's it's too high. It's eight. But like I said, I can put a resistor at the end of this wire before I hook it up to the um, squelch line on the plug that hooks to this cable that I need for this blue box to make Zello work. I do have it working right now without that, but I have to trick it. I have to apply five volts to my squelch line to make it work. So I, I know I have the audio part of this blue box. Here, let's move this so you guys can see this. I know I have the audio part of this hooked up. This cable here, you see curls around, plugs into this. And, uh, yeah, so I think I think this is looking good. So let's get this radio back together and see how things work. I'll put you on pause. And uh, I might just upload this video as, I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll upload this video as how to modify your Balfang UV5R for squelch line um, access or something. Maybe I'll shoot. Maybe I'll upload it for that. But it's working. So, but don't forget, you got to add a resistor in there. I think uh, probably like a 3K. You'd have to put a resistor in there to dump it down to five volts. I think a 3K resistor. I'll have to do the math and then check it with a meter. Any rate, so there we have it. Let's uh, put you on pause, or if I upload this video, uh, this will be a separate video from the box. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. And please subscribe. Thank you, and have a good day.